Hare Hari Lal Ki Jai. As we're performing worship to the Divine Lord, let us all stand, my friends. As we begin our beautiful night once more, the third night of our Navratri Yajna, where we worship Devi Ma. We join in weaving the sacred light and beautiful arati to Sri Jagadamba. Om Shri Ganesha Yanamaha Om Shri Saraswati Yanamaha Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namo Namaha Om Namaha Shiva Om Namaha Shiva Om Dum Durga Yanamaha Om Dum Durga Yanamaha Om Dum Durga Yanamaha Nishedena Tumma Kodhyavata Hari Brahma Shiva Ji Nishedena तुम को ध्यावता हरि ब्रह्मा शिवजी जय अम्बे गौरी मैया जय श्यामा गौरी जय अम्बे गौरी मैया जय श्यामा गौरी Jai Ambe Gauri Maya Jai Shama Gauri
As we begin this beautiful night once more, my dear friends, on behalf of the members of this wonderful mandir, we take this golden opportunity to welcome each and every one as we say aapko swagatam aur namaskar karta hu. Sab log to all bhaktas, kodal welcome, special jai sitaram once more. To the members of my wonderful group, once more extend the blessings of Devi Mata upon all of them. And to all those of our devotees, to all bhaktas, so tuned in via Facebook as well. Wherever you are in this world, taking a moment to join in. Swagatam Namaskar. Without further ado, at this time, as we're here, let us now clear the mind, let us clear our thoughts, let us sit upright, let us close the eyes, and let us begin with worship to Amba Devi. As we join in Omkar, we pay salutations to Allah. Om Dum Durga Yanamaha 
ओम दुम दुर्गा नम ओम दुम दुर्गा नम जयंते मंगला काले भद्र काले कपाल दुर्गाक्षमा शिवदात्रे स्वाहा स्वधा नमोस्ते रूपम दे जायम दे यशो दे यशो दे रूपम दे जायम दे यशो दे यशो दे न तातो न माता न बंदोर न दाता न पुत्रो न पुत्री न प्रेतियो न भरता न जाया न विद्या न व्रतेर ममेवा गटिस्पम गटिस्पम तमीका भवान गटिस्पम गटिस्पम तमीका भवान भवाब्दा वपारे महादुक्कबेरु प्रपाता प्रकामी प्रलोभी प्रमत्तम कुसंसार पाश प्रबंध सदाहम् गतिस्तम् गतिस्तम् त्वमेका भवानी गतिस्तम् गतिस्तम् त्वमेका भवानी न जाना मिदानम् न चद्यान योगम् न जाना मितंत्रम् न चस्तोत्र मंत्रम् न जाना मिपुजाम् न चन्यासयोगम् गतिस्तम् गतिस्तम् त्वमेका भवानी गतिस्तम् गतिस्तम् त्वमेका भवानी गतिस्पम गतिस्पम तमेका भवानी ओम दुम दुर्गा नमः ओम दुम दुर्गा नमः ओम दुम दुर्गा नमः On this beautiful night, my friends. While we have taken our arts and our seat in this wonderful mandir, many a times when we look at the pictures of Sri Durga Devi Mata, we always see once more the blessing of Bhagwan Shambhu on her side. While he stands on our most beautiful form, Mahavir Swami, we take the golden opportunity to pay salutations to him. And as we prostrate to Bajrangabali, on this wonderful night, we sing all together. Ram, Siara, Siara, Jai Jai Ram, Ram, Siara, Siara, Jai Jai Ram. श्रीगुरुचरणसरोजमुखुरसुधारुदीनतनुजानिके सुमिरा पवन कु 
बल बुद्धि विद्या दे हरहु कलेश राम सिया राम सिया राम जय जय राम
ರಾಮಲ ಕಣ ಸೀತಾ ಸಹಿತ ಹೃದ ಬಸವು ಸುರಭು ಪವನ ಸುತ ಹನುಮಾನ ಕಿ ಬಜರಂಗ ಬಲಿ ಕಿ ಹೌ ಜು ದು ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕಾರ್ ಫರಿ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಪವನ ಸುತ ಹನುಮಾನ ಕಿ ಯಾವ on this beautiful night my dear friends we have come together once more it's a blessed night it's a moment where devotees around the world they are taking this moment to worship the divine mother shri adi shakti durga devi mata and while we will worship a form and manifestation we look at the beautiful images to our murtis of devi ma and all the other deities right in front of us tonight we begin with a wonderful message taken from devi bhagavatam and while we will chant the name of that universal goddess it is said in kailash parvat The katha begins where Lord Shiva he sits on the parvat itself he sits on the mountain this is why he loves to sit parvat means mountain bhagwan shiva sits on kailash parvat and there he is looking down at the earth and he's looking to the world and he's seeing everybody continuing their daily life living their daily life and their purpose in the world and while prabhu shankar he looks down and he sees everyone something is about to happen Devi Mata is not next to him. Devi Mata is hiding from Prabhu Shankar. Lord Shiva sits there to begin the night in order to tune your mind, to tune my mind, to tune our mind, our intellect, our consciousness to the yajna itself so that we forget the world and all the troubles of the world. We join in a chant first of all. This chant is to allow us to forget everything on the outside. When we sit in the house of God, when we take a moment to be dedicated to God, when we take a moment to forget the world and say as we say pray it is said prayer is powerful forget the entire universe at this time to all those who are here tonight forget what is happening at home forget your jobs forget your problems in life forget your daily crisis when you sit here just shut it just let it be because everything happens by the grace of god today when you let go and you allow god to be in charge that is where the answers come हे शिव शंकर नमा शंकर शिव शंकर शंभु शिव शंकर शंभु हे शिव शंकर नमा शंकर शिव शंकर standing with the atari filled with prasad and they waiting for maybe 2 3 hours just to reach up to the murti we are here and we can glance eyes at the murti and we can get our blessing and while we are here take advantage of this opportunity so don't just sit let us start bolo everybody Bye-bye. 
And while Lord Shiva sits on the mountain, Parvati Mata was hiding all along. She wants to see what the Lord was doing. And from way behind one of the mountain, one of the rocks, she saw Lord Shiva looking down on the earth and he's looking at people's life. He's seeing people with good times. He's seeing those who are going through their bad times. He's seeing those who are happy and laughing. He's seeing those who are crying on a corner. And he looks down at the world and Devi Mata wants to play with the Lord. So Parvati Mata comes behind Prabhu Shankar and she gradually covers his eyes. When she covers the eyes of Lord Shiva, at that point, Lord Shiva, he doesn't panic. He takes a moment just to analyze the energy. But it is said with the mere touching of the hand to the eye of Lord Shiva, something beautiful is about to manifest. While Lord Shiva sat in, at that point in time looking down on the earth, it is said his mind had so many things in it. But when he looked down on the earth, looking at the lives of people, suddenly Parvati Mata came behind him and she covered his eyes. As soon as she covered the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord were shut, they were closed. It is said from that moment, Bhagwan Shambhu, he sees through the physical eyes and he sees through that Divya Chakshu, that divine eye, the third eye. As soon as the physical eyes were shut, the third eye opened automatically. And as soon as the third eye opened, 
It is said, being that there was darkness between the two physical eyes of Lord Shankar, it is said through darkness with the touch of Devi Mata. If Devi Mata touches your life, can you imagine what miracle can take place? Have you ever felt the blessing of Devi Ma? Have you ever felt where you sit down in your yajna or you sit in the satsang and you're taking part and maybe you're just singing, Hey Shiva Shankar, and you're chanting and you're just taking the energy in and all of a sudden maybe tears starts to flow. Maybe you feel all pores and ends. Maybe you feel as though something has changed, something is different. You feel a spark of energy coming from deep within. Some devotees feel the elevation of the chakras from the back and they start sitting straight and they feel so much power. Power and blessing of the Divine Mother. Today, Bhaktas, with the touch of Devi Mata, miracles can take place in your life. It is said with the touch of the Mother, the infinite glance of the universal bliss can fill your life. Adi Shankaracharya says, with the touch of the name of the Mother can turn your life into everything that you want it to be. With the touch of Devi Ma, miracles can take place. When the mother simply touched the eyes of the Lord, while the eyes were shut, the entire universe could have shut off. Because the eyes control the universe. When she touched the eyes with the hands, touching the face and the eyes of Prabhu Shankar, it is said the eyes immediately started to shed tears of Lord Shiva. And through the tears of Prabhu Shankar, it is about to fall to the earth. While the teardrop will fall to the earth, something beautiful will happen. I remember a kahani of Lord Krishna, according to Bhagavatam, where once, according to the, to the pastimes of Bhagavan Govinda, it is said one day, Bhagavan Shri Krishna, he saw Radharani lost. Radharani was searching for Prabhu Kanha and she didn't know where to find him. And while she was searching for him, she became so hurt that she couldn't find the Lord. She looked everywhere in Vrindavan, Brajabhumi, Mathura. She looked everywhere, Gokul, and she couldn't find the Lord. And there she sat down and she wanted to cry. And when she sat there, very sad and down and depressed, it is said while she was about to wipe the tears and she placed down her hand, two little hands just covered her eyes. She became scared for a moment, for a second she became scared and she started to ask now, who is there, who has covered my eyes? And there with a beautiful tone and a wonderful voice, he says, he says, Rani, the said one your eyes have been searching for is the said one who has covered your eyes. Prabhu Shankar Bolinath, his eyes are covered by his beloved. And while the eyes are covered, suddenly teardrops will flow. What was he doing before he closed his eyes or before the eyes were shut? He was looking down on the earth and he was looking at the lives of people. And at that point, with the teardrop, as it falls to the earth, immediately as it hits to the floor, it, like a raindrop that burst on the ground itself, it is said as soon as it hits to the floor, and the water splashes immediately from that spark that hits the earth. It is said a beautiful child is about to take birth and manifestation on the earth. A beautiful baby is about to manifest on the earth by the teardrops of the Lord. He is Prabhu Shankar. He is Lord of the cosmos. He is Father of the creation. It is said when his eyes were shut by Devi Mata because of the touch and a Devi's blessing, a child has taken birth. When Lord Shiva is in meditation and he concentrates on Lord Vishnu, one day when his eyes were closed and the teardrops of love fell to the earth, what took birth? What happened then? Anybody know? Huh? <laughs> Anybody here know? Rudraksha. Beautiful. When Lord Shiva meditated on Lord Vishnu one day, out of outpouring love, the eyes were filled with water. And when the water fell, the trees of the Rudraksha were born. The trees of the Rudraksha came into existence. So we had the Rudraksha beads to chant with, to wear as protection. There are rules and regulations for wearing that, according to Mahashiv Puran. But today, when the mother touches the skin of the Lord and the eyes are shedding teardrops, a child has taken birth. And because the eyes of Lord Shiva were shut, the child who has taken birth has been born blind. That child will not see. The child doesn't have the blessing of the eyesight. Do you know how blessed you are to be here tonight and still have the senses? 
Do you know, as a pandit, we go places, we go to the hospital sometimes, we go to devotees homes sometimes. Sometimes they come up to us, maybe they're coming in a wheelchair, maybe they're still lying on a bed, maybe they don't have a hand, maybe something happened and they had to have the hand amputated. Maybe something went wrong and they had to cut the feet. And you know what? We have the eyes, we have the hands, we have the nostril, the senses, pancha tattva. We have the feet to go to the holy places. Do we appreciate the gifts that God has given to us? God has given you the feet to go to the mandir. Where do you go instead? Jai Bhagwan. <laughs> God has given you the eyes to see the beauty of His wonderful form like these Murtis here tonight. What do you see instead? You know what we see? When God gives you the eyes and He says, look at the beauty of the world, the mountains, the valleys, the rivers, the streams, the murtis, the yajna, come and enjoy. Look at the murtis. Instead, what do we do? We take the eyes and we look in people's life. For what? <laughs> Mommy, you laugh. It starts with K. Kuchur. We go into people's life and we look for kuchur. And we look for problems and we look for issues and we look for faults and we look to see who is better than who and we look to see who is living which life and who's living the other life when god has blessed us with the gift of the eyes to see beautiful things of the world we look at the negativity of the world start seeing the positive of life count your blessings and not your problems today prabhu shankar bolinath the teardrops have fallen we've been given hands the hands to do what? To do what? To do seva and also we sit in Yajna and Pandit says, everybody let us take part. E Shiva Shankara. And you know what we do? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good. You're going good. <laughs> what do we do with the hands? Use it to clap. Use it to cleanse yourself. In different religions, sometimes when you go to get a jari in different religions, I wouldn't call name and so on, but I know different religions, when you go and you tell them you want a cleansing, they come by you and they do this. Why? Because the sound of the clap cleanses you. The sound of the clap runs negativity. Just remember in Hinduism, every part of the body has a God residing in it. Every part of the body. Just like the cow, come, they know the celestial cow. To those who have seen the murti of the cow where all the gods are in the murti, the body is consisted of all the devtas as well. And while the devtas reside even in the fingers, they are connected to every part of the body. When you clap, you are waking up the energy of God around you to protect you. In different religions, they know it. Clap. Get rid of bad energy. Wake up now. Today, we have been blessed with the hands. We have been blessed with the feet. We have been blessed with the eyes. We have been blessed with the ears to listen what? If I tell you what he says, <laughs> you should hear what he said just now. <laughs> to listen what? Do not listen problems in the world. Do not listen mischief. Do not listen negativity. When somebody comes up to you and say, hey, you see him, if I tell you something about him, say stop right there. I don't want to know. Stop the negativity from filtering in your entire body, my friends. Promote the spiritual strength that you have. Tap into the energies of the universe and cleanse your entire being. Prabhu Shankar Bolinath, it is said with the eyes closed, a drop of teardrop falls to the earth and a child has taken birth. The child is born blind. It is said in Hindi, Andha means blind. So Lord Shiva, Parvati Mata, they've seen this baby boy in the earth and immediately it goes down, they go down to the earth. And when they see this child, Devi Mata lifts the child and she holds the child in her hand. And she starts to rock the child like this. She says, little one, you have been born by the eyes of Prabhu Shankar. Today, because you are blind, Andha means blind, today we will call you Andha. You will be the son that has been born from the eyes of the Lord, but you are blind. And she holds on to the child and she starts to rock him. When you're rocking a baby, what are you sing? What do you normally sing? <laughs> Jai Bhagwan. <laughs> Long ago, this is what you used to sing. Chanda mama dur se 
कोई पकावे भूर से आप पकाई ताली में चंदा मेरे दूर कोई पकावे भूर आप पकाई ताली में चंदा मेरे दूर चंदा मेरे और भी सिंगा हो रॉक बाय बेबी The mother holds on to the child and she starts to rock the child very easily. And while she's rocking that child, she takes the child back to Kailash Parvat and she says, little one, you won't go anywhere today. Today you will stay with me and we'll find a solution. We'll think about some way or the other or something that can happen to you. And while she thinks about this, this child in her hands, according to the Ram Chitramanas, it is said when Prabhu Ramachandra took birth, at that point in time, his mother held him. in her hands and while being held in the hand of the mother she would rock him to sleep she will hug him to sleep she will feed him with her hands she will nurture him with the mother's love the care the affection it is said raja dashrath he will hold on to his child and he will not want to let go when you hold on to god don't let go listen beautifully shri ram jai ram जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री राम जय राम जय जय
श्री राम जय क्या बात बहुत ही सुंदर है श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ऑन दिस ब्यूटीफुल नाइट इट इज सेड while devi mata holds on to this child and she plays with the child and she's rocking him back and forth he's called andha in the meantime on the earth it is said one rakshasa one demon a demon king a rakshasa king an asura king he's ruling the part of the village where he lives he is called hiranyaksha have you ever heard that name yeah he has a brother name Uh-huh. <laughs> He has a brother name Hiranyakashipu. Where have you heard that name? When? Holi kele ragubira avadame holi kele. Normally when you hear that song you supposed to get up and dance and so on your song in half there will be this. <laughs> Everybody, holy kele ragu vira avad me. Kya baat? Ek baar, holy kele ragu vira avad me. Kajanan Swami ki Hiranya Kashipu has a brother called Hiranyaksha, and Hiranyaksha is one who is living in that kingdom, and around him he is looking as a wonderful king of the Rakshasas, but at the same time he has one fault. He does not have any children. His brother has five sons, and he has no children. Being that he doesn't have anyone, it is said as a king having everything. One day he goes and he sits down and he starts to pray for a child. While he's praying for a child, he's praying to Lord Brahma. Why? Lord Brahma is a creator. He has created everything in the world, and as a creator, it is that Hiranyaksha is about to pray to Lord Brahmadev. So he sits in that most beautiful posture. He closes his eyes. He forgets the entire world, and he starts to pray. In concentration, he focuses his mind on Brahmadev, and he chants the mantra, Om Shri Brahmadev Namaha. Om Shri Brahmadev Namaha. Om Brahma Dev Namaha. Om Shri Brahma Dev Namaha. And he's chanting the name of Lord Brahma. But while he's chanting the name of Brahma Dev, it is at that point where Brahma Dev in the heavens wants to come down and bless him because Brahma Dev is feeling happy that this bhakta, this devotee, is chanting my name. Whether he is a rakshasa. He's favoring me. He's trying to show me that he loves me this much that he's chanting the name of Brahmadev. Let me ask you a question. Something that I always come about when I see scriptures. Every time I come across a scripture, I always hear this, and I would always like to mention to devotees: when we hear of rakshasas in the scripture, demons, asuras, when we hear they want a gift. If they have to go any forest and stand up on one foot for a thousand years, they will do it because they want a gift. Even if the motive may be that as a demon person, as a raksha sick person, I want to get a gift so I could go and kill everybody. Even if that is what it means, they are willing to go and stand on one foot for a hundred years to get the gift and the blessing of the gods. And they are not devotees of God. How is it that when we, as the devotees of God, have to pray, we complain? Think about that. When someone who doesn't have much love for God prays, he's willing to sacrifice, and he will get that boon and get that blessing. How come when we, as the devotees who are loved by God and who love God and say that we will worship God and pray, how come when we have to sit and pray, we complain? I can't fast too long. I can't keep up for long. I can't get this for the prayer. I cannot make it on time to do this. I cannot do everything that comes of prayer. We have an excuse. Not so. If there's anything else in the world, we find time for it. And when it comes to prayer, don't worry, man. Next time, next time we will go. Next time we'll, we we will be a part of it. Next time we will sacrifice. Next time we will fast. Next time and every time we procrastinate. When it comes to God, we make excuses. When it comes to everything else, we are ready to do it. Today, bhaktas, a demon, a rakshasa, asura, 
he will sacrifice and he will fast that he will perform the ajna and he will pray to brahmadev and as soon as brahmadev sees him and feels satisfied brahmadev wants to come down and bless him but lord shiva stops him lord shiva intervenes he comes in front of brahmadev and he says brahmadev ji pranams today i see your bhakti chanting your name and he wants blessing but today i will go down and i will bless him don't worry i will grant him a boon myself alongside parvati devi we will go and we will bless him prabhu shankar he will go down to the earth and he will see hiranyaksha hiranyaksha is praying and suddenly he feels a bright light through the third eye he feels the bright light coming down and as soon as he opens his physical eyes he sees prabhu shankar bolenath and he sees parvati devi and there he stops his mantras he stops his chanting at that point and he puts his hands together and he pays his respects and he pays his pranams prabhu shankar says you have satisfied the gods today even though you are rakshasa today i want to ask you rakshasa hiranyaksha you have wealth you have a kingdom you have chariots you have servants you have money you have food you have everything you can think about what can you really be praying for and hiranyaksha says he says prabhu shankar my brother has five sons that can help him rule his kingdom but i am not blessed and fortunate enough to have children prabhu i beg you please can you bless me with a child at least and devi mata comes down and she's looking at him and she looks at prabhu shankar and she says prabhu are you thinking what i'm thinking i think this is the right moment i think this is the opportune moment he is a rakshasa and yes we have come to bless him but today let us bring this child called andhak and let us hand this child over to hiranyaksha and while lord shiva agrees devi goes and she brings andhak in her hand and she comes down to hiranyaksha and she gives him the baby and there rakshasa holds the baby in his hand and devi says this is a wonderful baby boy his name is andhak but i want to let you know that he has been born blind but he is a gift from lord shiva and parvati mata he accepts his baby and he looks into the face of the baby and when he looks at the entire body he says devi before i didn't have children i was not blessed to have any children at least today i have a child don't worry about blind don't worry about what he can see today i have a child and i will grow him up to be strong i will nurture him i will teach him right from wrong i will teach him what to do which path to take the parents teach us what to do right when parents teach us do we listen sometimes <laughs> today myself and the members of my group we were going to one puja and we were talking about how much licks all of we get <laughs> all of us will say well you know what you get more licks and he get less licks and i get more licks and everybody was talking about how much licks we get we're not going to tell all you <laughs> but while we were growing up and i'm sure many of you here if you did something wrong in your house your mother just had to look at you like this and you know stay quiet go in your room and don't come out not so <laughs> if you did something wrong and daddy just look at you as we say with the hard look you know automatically just walk away don't even come back there otherwise is what yeah <laughs> long ago could you have answered back your mother otherwise what otherwise your book appointment in the hospital <laughs> could you have answer back your mother answer back your father could you have stamp your feet and walk out on them no you couldn't you would have gotten you would again licks and in trouble today children are taking advantages of that we go prayers and puja we see children 5 years old telling mother and father leave me alone now go do your own thing today we see children standing up for the mothers and the fathers and the elders and they answering back It is up to us to teach our children. It is up to us to to correct them. When we were small, if daddy beat us, or if mommy would hit us, or if mom would correct us, or if she would yell at us, or whatever it may be, you might stand for a second and say, "Mommy, I hate you. I will not talk to you again." You may say, "Daddy, I don't like you anymore." But you know what? One hour after, daddy come home with a little ice cream, and you say, "Daddy, I love you." Eh? One hour after, mommy cooks your favorite food, and she says, "Son, come, let me feed you." And when she takes it, and she's about to put it in your mouth, you open your mouth and you stay quiet. And before you finish that meal, you start going little bit by mommy, little bit, little bit, until you start hugging her. 
Not so? What about today? The world has become different. Where is the love for our parents? Where is the love for the elders? Where is the respect, my friends? Today, the parents must continue to teach our children. We must learn to teach them the right thing, right from wrong, truth from untruth, what is real, what to do, what not to do. We need to correct them. We need to show them everything. And despite that, the children will say, you know what? Mommy too old now, she don't know nothing. But I think better than the book sense. You see that common sense? Yeah. <laughs> Today, while we speak of our scriptures, Hiranyaksha is holding his baby and the baby is blind and he hugs that child and he says, don't worry, Mahadev, I will teach this child how to live correctly. And while he's about to grow up this child on his own, he pays his pranams. Mere man vena ki tare Har pal shiva ka naam pukare Maine shiva se lagai lagan Ho lagan Maine shiva se lagai lagan Mere man vena ki tare Har pal shiva ka naam pukare Maine shiva se lagai Mere man 
Pati Mahadeva ki jai While this Asura, this Rakshasa, Hiranyaksha takes his child He takes his child back home and he starts to teach him He starts to teach him how to pray How to pray correctly How to do devotion How to strengthen his body How to become powerful And despite he's blind, he's allowing him to use the other senses to become strong While this child is becoming strong and growing up now it is said in due course and time, it is said the queens of the palace will bring forth now children who will be the brothers of this very Andhak. But they will be the stepbrothers because they will always say, we don't know where you came from. Despite he was handed down from the hands of Parvati Mata. As God would forbid at that point, it is said on the earth while Hiranyaksha, he was giving problems to all the people of the village it is said an incarnation of Prabhu Vishnu had to come to the earth. And when Lord Vishnu came to the earth, it is said in a very long battle, Lord Vishnu, one day, he destroyed Hiranyaksha. When Hiranyaksha was no more, in the kingdom, there were now the children who were there. The eldest was definitely Andak. So Andak was given the throne to rule the entire kingdom, and he was the king of that village. But while being the king, even his brothers, at that point, they were not happy with it. The brothers were not happy to see their brother successful. They will always throw the words at him. You were not part of us. You were hunted down. You are not a part of us. You should never get the kingdom. And one day, he stepped down and he looked at all of them. And there he wondered in his mind, how do people live in the consequence or the situation like this? In today's world, why does a brother fight his own brother? In today's world, why does a sister fight her sister? Why does brother fight sisters nowadays? Why do we have fighting amongst siblings in today's world? Why does a brother fight a sister for a piece of land? Why do people fight one another for the house? Why do we fight for the gold? Why do we fight for the wealth and the gold chain and the beer and the... Why do we fight for it? Do you know how much fight takes place nowadays? Especially when someone dies? As soon as someone dies, everybody's all up in the house looking for something now. Anybody find the deed? Anybody find the goal? Anybody find anything? <laughs> it has become a norm now. Why fight? And maybe if everything has to be split, no problem. But after the fight and somebody get the deed and somebody get the bearer, after that you hear this brother stop talking to that one. You hear the other sister stop talking to the other one. And there you see family breaks up because of wealth, because of materialistic things and the greater essence of living has been lost today while Andak sits on the throne he's asking himself why are they fighting me is it because I can't see is it because I am blind so he steps down and he says you know what I don't know how to deal with it he has to now lift his aura and lift his energy so he leaves the kingdom and he goes deep in the forest and he says you know what I will pray and try to become a better person I will pray to become one in which my father will be proud to see. Are you a child tonight who could say your parents are proud of you? Yeah? Think of it in your mind. Are you one who can say at this point, I live a good life, I do good things, I help others, I sacrifice, I do worship to God, my parents will be proud? Or are you one who sit tonight and say, you know what, I don't know what my parent thinks of me. If you're not sure, then probably we need to step up a little bit. Then probably we need to think and step up the way we live or the way we treat our parents or the elders or the people around us. And it is not to satisfy people, but it is said when our parents are satisfied with us, we get an extra blessing, a contentment takes the heart of the parent and we get a blessing. Today while Andak, he goes deep in the forest. He sits down and he says, I wish my father was here. If he was here, we would never have this problem. And when he thinks of his father, he starts to shed a tear. Think of your elders tonight. Think of the people you have lost. We have now, we are still almost to the end of a pandemic. Think of how many people left the world. If you've lost a loved one, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a friend, a relative, an elder, think of them. This wonderful bhajan, it says that while we live in the world, 
time is short. Don't live with animosity. Don't live by having enemies. Look at the world and go beyond. Dekh tere sansar ki halat kya ho gaye Bhagawan? Kitna badal gaya insaan? Kitna badal gaya insaan? Suraj na badla, chand na badla, na badla re asman. Kitna badal gaya insaan? Kitna badal gaya insaan? And while he's worshipping Brahmadev, in his mind, all he wants is that blessing. Which blessing? He sits down and he's chanting, Om Shri Brahmadev Namaha. Again and again he's chanting. And while he's chanting the name of Brahmadev, at that point, Lord Brahma feels comfortably comes down to manifest and to bless this child Andhak. And when he comes in front of Andhak, he says, great and powerful one, your father's name has been renowned in the world. And today, while you're here, I will bless you. Whatever you wish, whatever you want, ask for it. And whatever you ask for, I will give it to you. At that point, it is said, Andak, there's only one thing he wants. He says, Prabhu, please bless me. Bless me with eyesight. I want to see. I want to see the world. I've been born blind. I can't see anything. And because of that, I've been thrown out of my kingdom. If you can bless me with the eyes, I will regain my kingdom and everything else. Nobody wants to see a blind king ruling a kingdom. Today, please, Brahmadev, Hatha Jodhakar, I beg you, give me eyesight. And Brahmadev, he comes closer and he waves the hand over the eyes of Anda. And when he waves the hand over the eyes, automatically the eyesight is about to be restored. He's about to be blessed with the eyesight. And as soon as he winks and he opens the eyes, he sees Brahmadev. And he puts his hands together and he takes his pranam. Deka tere sansarate halat kya ho agay bhagavan Kitna badal gaya insan Kitna badal gaya insan Kitna badal gaya insan Kitna badal gaya Prem Sushma Pati Mahadeva ki Andak has been blessed with the eyesight and now we can see the world and he takes his time and he starts to walk 
And while he's walking, he's thinking of his family. He says, when I go back to the kingdom, I will have to learn how to live with everybody now. Nobody liked me because I couldn't see how to coexist with them. Should I just shut them out? Should I let them be? Should I stop talking to this one? When things in life don't go the way you want it to work or the way you want it to be, when people don't add up to you, do you just shut them out? It is said on one cold winter, on one cold winter, some porcupines, they were out in the cold. And as soon as they started to feel cold, they said to themselves that they will stay where they are and try to build warmth. But when they stood at that spot and tried to build warmth, with the, the coldness of the atmosphere, not many of them could survive. It was too cold. So they decided now to group up together so that they will build warmth all together. When they came all together and they gathered amongst themselves and they started to squeeze together to build that warmth so that they will save themselves from the coldness, even then, because of the spikes that they had, they will then poke at one another and they will kill the person next to them. So what could they do? <laughs> so they decided to now separate again. But this time when they separated and they saw the wounds, they came to the understanding. You know what? In order to live this time, we will come close enough, not too close. We'll come close enough just to still feel that warmth and connect with one another. So in turn, maybe we shall get some coolness on the outside, but at least we will tap into the ones who are around us just close enough to receive their warmth, but not too close to stick one another and then die. When we are going through crisis and situations in the world, it is said when there are people in our lives like friends and the people who we are not sure about, you don't just shut them out. You live and you coexist just like you porcupines. You don't keep them too close, but you don't keep them too far. You live just to coexist just enough because sometimes when you get too close to certain people, then the spike tends to destroy you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you live just close enough to understand one another, have mutual understandings, but you don't just shut them out just to coexist. When you become too close to people, how do you older people is always say, too much laughter brings? Yeah. Too much laughter brings tears and cry. We live just with an amount of distance. Today, Andak has been blessed with the eyes and he goes back to the kingdom. And when he goes there, he goes to rule the kingdom and being that they have seen him now and he's seeing everybody and he's strong and he's already powerful, all of them, they have left because they knew how strong he was. He sits on the kingdom, he sits on the throne and he's looking after the kingdom. And now he's feeling as though he's so powerful when he walks, people run. People move, people get away from him because his eyes are there. He can see he's strong as he is, so everybody's leaving. And while everybody's leaving, Prabhu Shankar Bodhinath, he says, what kind of child have I brought in the world with my tears? That when he walks, people leave. That when he walks, people become fearful. What kind of child is that? How do you feel and how would you feel if your child grows up like that? And wherever he goes, people leave and people run away from him. Lord Shiva says, I have to correct him and I will have to teach him a lesson. How does Lord Shiva decide to do that? It is said, Lord Shiva says, Parvati Devi in Kailash Paravat, let us go down to the earth and let us teach him a lesson. And while they've gone to the earth, they've gone in the forest and they've seated themselves. They have timed it so well that one of the ministers of the palace where the son Andhak rules, one of the ministers, he's passing through the forest, when suddenly he glances the eyes of a yogi. The yogi is sitting on a rock, he's in meditation, and next to him, his beautiful consort is decked. This minister, he sees in front of them, Nandi. He sees a bull. He takes a peek and he sees, wow, look how beautiful. He runs back to the palace and he goes to Andak. He says, Raja, if I tell you what I've seen in the forest, there's a yogi and next to the yogi, there's a beautiful Devi. I think she will be the right person for you. I think she will be the best person to sit on your side and to rule this entire kingdom. We should bring her. Raja says, really? Is she so beautiful? He says, yes, so beautiful. You have to see her. Okay. Get the army and you go and you bring her for me. I want you to go and I want you to bring her. 
If she is so beautiful, bring her. So they prepare an army. You ever hear a whole army go to bring somebody? <laughs> like long time when one boy likes a girl, he's shy to go talk to her. So he tells his friend, hey, you go not talk to she first. Two of you, come. You're my friends. Come, you're my partner. You go and talk and you go and talk and find out if she likes me first. And if she says yes, then I will go. <laughs> And that consent is warriors. Go, bring her, find out, speak. If anybody gives you problem, you destroy them. You bring her to me. So they've gone to the forest. They've gone to the spot and they sing Lord Shiva sitting there. They sing a yogi and they sing the Devi. They approached them and they saw the yogi first. They walked up to the yogi and they said, Great one, I see you are a sage and you're powerful. I want to ask you something, great sage. Great sage, I see you have a wonderful consort next to you. Our ruler is the king of the village not far from here and he's powerful. He has sent us to bring this consort of this person who's next to you to be his consort. Can we take her? You know what Lord Shiva says? Lord Shiva says, can't you see who I am? I'm a yogi. I'm detached. I have no problem. I'm not attached to anybody. You take and go if you want. <laughs> Lord Shiva says, go. So they've gone to Devi Mata now and they put their hands together and they've now, while standing there, they're speaking to her. Beautiful one. <laughs> you all want to hear lyrics? <laughs> when the boy walks up to the girl and he's about to sweet talk her, what does he say? Mommy, you don't know about that. <laughs> Ritesh, what do you say? Rita said when he walk up to the girl, he said, you are the chana in my doubles. <laughs> what do you say? There are so many lyrics today you hear. <laughs> what do you really say? Today, my friends, it is said while Andak has sent them, they have gone to her and they're speaking. You look so beautiful. He would love your hair. Look at your complexion. You'll be perfect when you sit on the throne. You will rule the entire kingdom. Can you come with us? And when she saw them asking, she became agitated. Can't you see how dedicated I am sitting next to this yogi? And yet you have the audacity to come and even ask? She becomes angry and she becomes agitated. She says, listen, I will give you 10 seconds to leave from here and go back to your kingdom. Because if I become agitated, I will destroy everybody who's here. I give you 10 seconds to leave. And as soon as they saw her anger and her rage coming on, they decided, you know what, let's go back. I think he has to come by himself. They decided to leave and go back to the kingdom and they went to Andak. And they say, Raja, you have to go bring her yourself. She's too strong and powerful. She seems agitated and we don't want to interfere. Can you go? And Andak, my friends, he says, she's giving problems to come. I'm a king, I'm powerful, I can give her anything that she wants. Why won't she come? When Andak steps down from his throne and he's about to go now, he's now going into the forest. Lord Shiva and Parvati Mata, they've come up with a plan. And this is the plan. Nandi, you take the Ganas and you block the entrance to the forest. And we will stay not too far behind. You stay, you stay there and you block the forest. Don't allow them to come. We want to test their faith and test their strength. We want to test their patience and test their anger. Every single day, God tests you, not so? Every day, God brings some situation in your life to test you. We need to move forward. We need to be that better person. We need to stop looking back. We need to stop making excuses. We need to stop making the excuses for going to prayer and worship and devotion. We need to stop blaming people in the world. Have you ever seen anybody where if, they do, if anything goes wrong, they never do anything? <laughs> have you ever seen people where no matter what takes place if everything is wrong that was never me he do it she do it nobody admits they will never admit sometimes we need to stand up and be the bigger person my friends Lord Shiva says let us test him let us test his mind let us test his strength Nandi you stand there and you block the entrance and we will be waiting behind 
and while they are waiting it is said Anak comes with his army and when they see Nandi and they see all the gods who have come to support them and the Ganas Anak says hey everybody move and allow me to pass gods or whoever you are move aside and allow me to pass don't you know who I am I am the son of Hiranyaksha I am Andak I am powerful and even if God were to come at this point even he will fear me move aside and while he's asking while he's shouting while he's about to fight them Nandi stands up and he says if you need to pass then I am Nandi then you will have to pass through me a war is about to take place right there and while the war is about to begin and a fight is about to start scripture tells us today that some of the gods they've transformed themselves and they will then battle in battle with Andak and as the battle continues Andak says in his mind you know what while my ministers are fighting and while my army they are fighting I will take missiles and I will throw it deep into the forest and wherever that woman is wherever that Devi is wherever whoever she is wherever she is I will destroy her and she will learn the power of Andak devotees the battle continues and while the battle takes place Nandi realizes how powerful Andak is and the fight is going on and the Ganas they are losing so Nandi turns before anybody breaks the barrier and Nandi runs back to Prabhu Shankar and gasping for air he says Prabhu they are defeating us they are powerful he is the son of Hiranyaksha did you know that Prabhu and Mahadev shakes his head he says Prabhu they are too strong for us when Devi Mata hears the hurt and the pain in the voice of Nandi she says child I think it is time where the world sees the power and the greatness of the mother it is said Parvani Bata she says Prabhu Shankar you must go back to Kailash Parvat allow me to take this battle and let me teach the world how to respect people let me teach the world how to live with discipline let me teach the world how to do the right thing because when they slip and when they make the mistakes knowingly let them know that the Divine Mother will be there to pull on them today Bhaktas while Parvati Mata takes it upon herself she goes onto the field it is said she loses the hair her complexion changes and she calls out to Andak and she says Andak if you don't stop this war now I will destroy you and Andak calls out he says Devi while you're standing there you look so beautiful even though you have loosed the hair Devi she looks at him and she closes the eyes and appearing in her hand it is said the Trishul of Prabhu Shankar Bolinath it is said automatically while the Trishul is kept in one hand you will see the tiger on the other and a form is now changing Jayanti Mangala Kali Badra Kali Kapalani Durgaksama Shivadatri Swaha Swadhana Mostuti Om Dum Durgaya Namaha Om Dum Durgaya Namaha Om Dum Durgaya Namaha Om Dum Durgaya Namaha Ya Devi Sarva Bhutishu Durga Rupina Sanstita Namastase 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 Namo Namaha and as she takes the shushul and she aims it in the direction of Andak, it is said she releases the shushul. Listen to Naim. Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani. Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani. Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani. Jagadamba Bhavani. Jagadamba Bhavani. Jagadamba Bhavani. Jagadamba Bhavani. Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani Om Dum Durgai Namaha Everybody Bole Jai Ho Tarki Yamaya Mangana Bani Hai Tarki Yamaya Mangana Bani Hai Tarki Yamusakani Bhavani
releases it and immediately she destroys Anda. She says, we have brought you into the world and you've become disrespectful. Haven't you seen when I sat next to the yogi, when I sat next to my loved one? Haven't you seen that mark? At that point, he notices the mark. What is the mark of a married woman? Piyari de ki maya mangna bani hai Piyari de ki maya mangna bani hai Sindhur de ki musakani bawani Sindhur de ki musakani bawani Jai bolo jagadamba bawani Jai bolo Jagadamba bawani jagadamba bawani Jagadamba Bhavani, Jagadamba Bhavani Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani Jai Bolo Jagadamba Bhavani Jagadamba Devi Mata Ki Aaj Shakti Durga Bhavani Mata Ki That day they said the mother took the trishul and immediately she destroyed Anrak and she says today we have brought you in the world and today we will take you out of the world. When you cannot live with respect, then I will show you as a mother, I can show the world all my forms. I have many forms. I can be loving and at the same time, I can be hard to work with. If you live with respect in the world, I will bless you with anything in abundance. But the moment you live a bad life, a bad life, my friends, a life of no character, no moral, no value, no ethics, then I will be there to stand and put you back in line or else even I can destroy you. I will create you and I will take you back. Vrindavan mi hari ki, ad shakti durga devi mata ki. This is where we end our beautiful message tonight, my friends. As we've seen once more the glories, the strength and the power of the Divine Mother, her manifestations, at this time, as we've concluded our katha, this is where we invite everyone to stand as we now join in our beautiful final arati. Suno meri devi paravatavasini तेरा पारण पाया तेरा पारण पाया अरे सुनो मेरी देवी पर्वत वासी तेरा पारण पाया मेरी देवी तेरा पारण Tere aage aaya, sun 
पर्वत बाजो दीवाना ऊंचे पर्वत बाजो दीवाना ऊंचे पर्वत बाजो दीवाना
Jai Mata. On this beautiful night, once more we've come to the end of three nights of wonderful devotion to that Supreme Goddess. And while we will worship Devi Mata, we will continue to pray to her for the rest of the nights of Navratri. शक्ति दुर्गा भवानी माता की सत्य सनातन धर्म की जय 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 सीताराम आस लीजिए सीट्स